I don't remember pressuring him. I just remember saying, I mean, it's been five years, so after I finish school, I think I'm going to go back to New York and try some other things. Oh, he didn't want that, so. <laughs> he understood the hint. <laughs> The next clip that we have is a few of our couples talking about uh, like how they knew they were with the one, the one they wanted to spend their lives with, including you guys. Um, so roll the clip. She made it very clear to me, like, I'm not trying to be your baby mother or your living girlfriend. You know, we have to make this official if we're going to stay together. And I was like, what are you tripping about? Like, we, you know, it was going to happen, blah, blah, blah. I still wasn't prepared to get married. I was only 24 years old. Right. I was 24 years old. Like, I, I still hadn't even experienced life. I had been with her since I was 18. We lived together. I never had that opportunity to kind of be a man and, and sow my oats or just be a man. And I just felt like I wanted that opportunity, but I had to make a choice. Was that more important to me or being with someone who helped me become who I am. So I was just like, I can't let her walk away. I was just like, I gotta... I thought you just wanted to propose. I didn't know it was... I did, want to, I did want to propose, but I, what I I'm saying... I didn't give you an ultimatum. You didn't give me... You, yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah, you did. You, you, you don't want to call it an ultimatum. Okay. But <laughs> it was right, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't... We were living together. We had been living together since college. Realistically, what are we waiting for? Once we started talking about like having a family and having children and thinking about like the environment that we want them to be raised in, um, I think marriage came up then because we didn't want our children to, you know, live with life partners. Like we wanted them to know that we were committed to each other, married, um, and brought them into the world like on purpose um, and in a purposeful, like loving environment. Because getting married doesn't like change how much you love someone, um, but I think it changes the kind of situation um, that your house is essentially built upon. Um, so once we started wanting to have children, we knew that marriage, children, it was like the best next steps. Did I ever pressure you to get married? <laughs> Don't say I pressured you. Did I? You are, are you serious? I'm sorry, I have memory issues. No, you don't. You, you clearly remember facts and tidbits of, of certain things, but I don't remember. You remember I do? saying that when you moved here from school and you fig you said that if I'm not married by the time I graduate, I'm out of here. Well, I mean, if I did say that. <laughs> Wow. I didn't have babies on a wedlock. Ah, so you admit the fact that I was pressured. Is that pressure? I wasn't pressured. I, I, was listen, that pressure? Uh, don't try to flip it on me. <laughs> oh, oh, it wasn't so, pressure. I did it because I wanted to, but you, so left me with an, you left me with an ultimatum. You said by the time you graduated, if I had not uh, given you a ring, that you were going to leave. <laughs> Is that pressure? <laughs> I would think it is. <laughs> wow. Oh. Was that pressure? <laughs> I would think it is. I do want to say one thing that we have seen in, you know, over 100 interviews. At some point, a woman in, in a relationship said either early like me, hey, pay attention to me, let's, let's you know, be, talk about dating, or hey, I'm not going to just date to date you. We're, this is this is going somewhere, or, or I'm not interested. Exactly. And so it is fun and interesting to share those stories because we see it over and over again. And a lot of people ask about that because women a lot of times are afraid yeah. to say, "I'm not just chilling here." Yeah. So I love that story. Good. I mean, we had been dating for five years at that point, long distance, uh, for four of them. Mm -hmm. It had been enough time. I'm like, if you can't decide by now, dude, like, don't hold me back. You sitting there enjoying life. I'm sitting there being the perfect girlfriend, and perfect obviously don't work. So look. <laughs> was the long distance part? Was that ever hard? 
oh God, yes, it was. We would see each other. We tried to make a, a point of seeing each other at least once a month, but it was it was tough because you literally there was no FaceTime then. There, there was there Skype? No, there was no Skype no either. Skype. So literally all we had was the phone. And if I couldn't find him, I'm like, I right, now you got like 45 minutes to answer this phone or else. How was the long distance part for you? <laughs> For me, it was difficult. You loved it. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. Listen, I, I knew, listen, it was it was hard. I mean, she had her, her spies on me in Nashville. No, it was difficult, you know. But back then, I was in at the, the height of my career. Uh, I was playing football for the Titans. You know, I come up to Chicago, kick the Bears' ass a couple times. You know, you know, just, but I just had to throw that in there. I got, I got ties here, came up. But I went Ohio State, destroyed Northwestern, you oh, know, good, so Jesus. that's, I, I laid my thing down here, so it, it allowed me to do certain things. But my point is, I was at the height of my career and my focus was, my career was my craft, and I wasn't thinking about marriage, you know. During that period in time, you know, there were some things that were, that were my weaknesses. He was showing uh, his ass. Yeah, I did. We got through that, and I'm gonna be completely transparent with that. You know, I'm not gonna fake it because, in that situation, you know, when you are living and fulfilling your dream and you're doing your thing, things come at you. And I had to really, truly find out what it is that I wanted before I was going to take her on as my wife. Mm -hmm. And um, it was shortly thereafter she moved to Tennessee, and we had to live together to see if it really could work because now it's real, you know, waking up every day and going through a routine and under the same roof and, and coming home to somebody, that all that was new to me. So it, it, it worked itself out and we found a, a nice, beautiful rhythm and uh, continued to move forward in that. How was the rhythm for you? I mean, you being on the road and then coming to Nashville, I mean, how was that for you, that that transition? It was it was good. Like I I traveled for a life, to, uh, for a career, so traveling and trans transitioning was nothing for me. Once I got down there, I, I didn't have uh, to, I had things to do, so I wasn't just sitting there waiting for him to come home. I was busy myself, and it, it just kind of fell into place, but after, after two years, I was like, okay, well... I don't remember pressuring him. I just remember saying, I mean, it's been five years, so after I finish school, I think I'm going to go back to New York and try some other things. Uh, he didn't want that, so. <laughs> he understood the hint. <laughs> I'm not going to, I might have no, I have no. Shut it out. <laughs> I sat down at the computer and I, I typed an email to my sister, and I was telling her, I was like, my baby don't like me, and I don't like him. Mm -hmm. 